This is our bed gown pattern. Now I folded up the edge down there just so that I had a nice straight, flat, stronger bottom edge to deal with. But it also comes with extra pattern pieces. These pattern pieces, however, are specifically for uh, contrast fabrics, but you don't need to do contrast fabrics. This would be for a folded up cuff. Melissa, your, your cuffs are folded up and she didn't use any contrast fabric. She just used the inside of her fabric to show that. This is for the collar. It's usually contrast, but it could be the same fabric or it could be, don't want to do it at all. Now, this is Melissa in the bed gown sample, and you can see, again, it was made for me and not for her. But you wrap it around a little further, you can see the length is different. It doesn't have pleats in the back, so when you wear it with an apron, it would look like that in the back. Now we're going to work on the bed gown. Now, I've already determined that I'm going to line it, and I'm actually going to make it reversible so that I could use either of these fabrics as the outside fabric. And yes, there's a huge difference in value, but I looked at these two fabrics and said, hmm, looks good to me. So I'm happy with this. Now, just like our pattern when we checked it to make sure it would fit onto our fabric, I have folded this in, in quarters. So this is going to be my hem, the raw edge. My sleeves are gonna come out to the selvage edge here. And this is going to be the back of my neck in here. I've done the same thing on this fabric. Because this is a stripe, I wanna make sure that I have a beautiful stripe going down the center back. And so I have pinned that in place and I can actually cut this all at the same time. I don't have to do cut the top and cut the bottom. Hello, so now I've put my two layers of fabric right on top of each other with all the folds matching up. So all of my selvage edges are on that side and my folds are on this side. Now you might notice that my fabric is just a wee bit short for this bed gown pattern. And I don't really mind. It happened that this was the length of fabric I had, and if it's two and a half inches shorter, who cares? No one's gonna be taking me to the police over that. So my next job is to cut this out to make sure that all the important things that need to be marked are marked, and you know how to do that because you watched me do it with the short gown. confused about those folds here we're going to make a sample just to make ourselves feel more at ease this is going to be the hemline these are going to be the sleeve line and if I was to cut out the same shape of my garment remember you have to cut the center front too Now I have my garment cut out. I just realized I made a mistake over here. Now I said that I had folds here and I had folds here. In order for me to get in and out of this garment, I have to have the center front open. So even though it's on a fold now, I'm actually going to open that seam all the way to the hem.
There you go. For the bed jacket, it asks you to make a cuff and a collar. I have my cuff here and my collar here. Now again, I said that you could either do it out of the same fabric, out of contrast fabric, or have none at all. I'm going to do the collar out of this muslin because I think that will be attractive, but I actually might make the sleeve cuff out of the original fabrics so that I have that. But you need to lay it out just in this simple manner. I have enough room to get around this entire piece. Oopsie, I take that back. I look at the pattern. It's always good to look at your pattern. And I see very clearly it says, place this edge on the fold. So I will do that. This edge is on the fold. And that edge is also on the fold. Now I will cut out three sides and I will cut out three sides of this. Alrighty, now Melissa reminded me of something. On this long bed gown, you actually need to put pocket slits in your side seams. And you can see where they go at a comfortable place below your waist so that you can reach in through your pocket slits into your petticoat and into your pockets. So don't forget to leave a pocket slit on each side seam of your lining and your jacket pattern. And I would suggest nine inches. Okay, good so suggestion. So there's room to pull out what's going, what you're pulling out, <laughs> to put in what you're putting in, and you know, with your hand right. wide like that, so. We, we talked about that on the petticoat pattern. You can go back and look at that information. Right. There. Okay, that's true. All right, ladies. Now you have cuffs and you have a collar. You need to stitch your cuffs onto the end of the sleeves. The collar is made as a separate item. If you are going to line it, it gets put inside that seam that you're gonna do all the way around your garment, just like you did with the short gown. Actually, the construction of this is identical to the short gown with the exception of that collar piece. You'll need to find the center of the collar, the center of the back of the garment, connect them with pins, pin them to the edge of the collar, and then just stitch them in. Well, shall I model a little bit of our finished garment? So here's now remember, I made mine reversible. And I want to point out something else on this pattern, is that it has fairly long sleeves. I have really long arms. If I have a sleeve that fits me that goes over my wrist, it's a long sleeve. So people like my dear friend Terry Brasco, oh baby, you don't need to add extra length onto those sleeves. So be aware how long the sleeve actually is. And I think this is a pretty charming little jacket. I might actually wear it in real life. But I also want to remind you that I did put in the pocket slits on each side. So that can be done very easily.